So I am going to give you a, a sign. Verse 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. No, you're not going to choose a sign? Well, I'm going to give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. I mean, we're just getting started. We're in chapter 7. There's so many prophecies that are referenced, scriptures that are referenced back in the New Testament. So we're going to get an opportunity to see these. And actually, if you will, keep your place here, of course, and flip over to Matthew chapter 1. And from the Old Testament, okay, and if you want to learn good doctrine, it's not what this sermon is about, but, but here's a little, a little piece of information. If you want to understand how God feels about translations of his word, we can get it from his word itself. Because the Old Testament was recorded in Hebrew language, and the New Testament in Greek, by and large, right? I know it's Aramaic, but whatever. But when you have quotes then in the New Testament quoting the Old Testament, and both of them are translated into English for us, you're going to find time and time again that the quotes are not word for word, every single word exact matches. Way more often than not, they're not identical. Every single word for word is exactly the same. Well, did they misquote the Bible? No. No, they didn't misquote the Bible. Well, why is it like that? Because those were the words. The, the, the Greek was translated exactly the way it, it was supposed to be, exactly the way it's written. That is translated. Those are the words that were used. The Hebrew, likewise, when it's translated in English, those are the words that were used. That's what those words mean. That's what the, the translation is. They were both acceptable and right in English, but then why aren't they word for word? Because God's showing us. Now, look, don't get me wrong here because I believe that every word of God is true and every word of God is important, and I believe in every word of God, and when we do our Bible memory, it's every word of God. But here's the thing is that when it comes to God's word, and you see synonyms used, God didn't have a problem with those being the quotations from the, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. That there was no problem with, when the Bible said, here, we're going to see it, and this is an important truth. Um, obviously, I think there's things that we could learn from this, and there's, there's even more reason, there could be even greater reasons why quotes were, were um, spoken the way they were to give us some extra teaching and knowledge. And I think one of those reasons is because of the fact that if you have a translation of God's word that literally, you know, the, the perfect example would be eternal versus everlasting that mean exactly the same thing. You know, we've seen time and time again between the, Old, the New Testament and Old Testament that when, when that happened, it's still considered God's word. Now, obviously, you don't just go in and say, well, let's see what we could change. Because what would be the point of that? There is no reason to do that at all. And you don't want to mess with something that's already been done and it works and it's good, right? It's great and it's perfect, not just good. I mean, it's, it's, it's right. so hung up um, that you know, on people who even would say that that's a possibility if our language were to change enough to warrant, well, we need, we need to have this right in the common language. That's ridiculous. And we can have the Bible teach us itself. I mean, are you going to say that Matthew was wrong? Because here's a, let's read it. You're in Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to reread Isaiah 7, 14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. 
Is that right? Is that a right translation? I believe it is. It's in English. Matthew 1, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying. Now this is a claim in the book of Matthew that the Lord spake by the prophet, the prophet Isaiah, and said these words. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Shall conceive. Oh, must, one of them must be wrong then. No, no, no. One of them doesn't have to be wrong. But they used different words. They sure did. But the quote on that passage is, is say, that's what God said. That's what God said. He said, this is what God said. Conceiving and being with child are the same thing. 